Hello, everyone, and welcome to this edition of Race Face Driver Updates. I'm Brittany Lung. Let's get started with our Race Face Drivers. We head out east to Hickory, North Carolina in the historic Hickory Motorsports Speedway, where we find three of the Race Face Drivers competing in the NASCAR Wheelin' All-American Series 150 lap Bobby Isaac Memorial. First, we check in on Connor Mosack, who started the race 15th in his number 18 Nick Taylor Chevrolet and finished 14th, only his second finish outside the top 10 in 25 starts. Up next for Connor, back at Hickory this Saturday. Next up, Adam Lemke, who is making his third start of the year at Hickory. The Junior Motorsports Off Access Paint Chevrolet was third fastest in qualifying. Adam quickly started his march to the front at the drop of the green flag and was leading the race when a clutch mechanical failure ended his night. Up next for Adam, NASCAR Wheelin All-American Series at Myrtle Beach this weekend, weather permitting. Let's now move to Sam Mayer, who is making his return to Junior Motorsports for the first time this year in a late model. Sam qualified seventh and ran in the top five for the first part of the race, swapping the lead back and forth before finally taking the lead and parking it in victory lane and winning the 43rd annual Bobby Isaac Memorial. Now that's a big trophy. Up next for Sam, ARCA Racing Series at Salem Speedway on September 14th. Sheldon Creed returned to the Robbie Gordon Stadium trucks for some fast high-flying fun over the weekend at Portland International Raceway. In race one, Sheldon set fast time, but that put him in the last starting position. But when the green flag dropped, the showstopper did what Sheldon does best, race to the front and takes the win. In race two, he finished sixth, but that was good enough to win the weekend overall championship. Up next for Sheldon, NASCAR Gander Outdoor Truck Series at Las Vegas Motor Speedway on September 13th. Jesse Love was at Lake Ozark Speedway for two nights of racing in the Power Eye National Midget League. On Saturday, Jesse was third in his heat race and was running in the top five when contact from another car cut his right rear tire on lap 24. The KKM team got him back out, but he had to start tail end of the field with six laps to go, but he was able to charge through the field scoring another top 10 in eighth position. On Sunday night, Jesse started 11th and was moving forward, but again was hit by another car, and yes, suffered another flat tire. This time, it was the left rear. However, with five laps to go, he only managed a 13th place finish. Up next for Jesse, sprint cars this Wednesday and Thursday in the Gold Cup at Silver Dollar Speedway in Chico, California. Joe Valento had a great start to his night at Dell's Raceway Park in his Kelly Byers Performance Midwest Truck Series Chevrolet as he took second in his heat race and then started on the front row for the feature. Joe dominated the first 22 laps, putting over two seconds between himself and the second place truck before a caution flew on lap 23. On the restart, Joe pulled out to a comfortable lead, but the engine let go, ending his night. Up next for Joe this Saturday night at Marshfield Motor Speedway. Brian Henderson was having some fun this weekend in his spec Miata at Summit Point Motorsports Park in West Virginia. On Saturday, Brian started 11th but was experiencing electrical issues but still managed an 11th place finish. On Sunday, he started 11th and came home in 5th. Up next for Brian, IMSA Michelin Pilot Series at the famed Laguna Seca Road Course in Monterey, California on September 14th. Now let's check in on our Race Face Next drivers. Bryce Bazanson had his best finish of the year, coming home in fifth place at Evergreen Speedway in his CrowdStrike NASCAR Wheelin All-American Series Super Late Model. Bryce started on the pole with the invert but got spun early then battled his way back to a fifth place finish. Up next for Bryce, back to Evergreen Speedway on September 14th. Jake Bowman was at Las Vegas Motor Speedway's bull ring for the INEX Legend Car Weekend. On Friday night's race, the Young Lions competed against the semi-pros in a combined race. Jake started on the pole and led all 25 laps and parked his number 71 in victory lane for the win. On Saturday, Jake qualified fifth, but started on the pole with the infert, but was hit on the start going into turn one so hard that it broke the rear end gear, ending his night. 
Up next for Jake, INEX Legends at Kern Raceway Park on Saturday. Cassidy Hines was back in her 600 winged micro sprint at I-76 Speedway on Saturday, where she finished fourth in her heat and then brought home a top 10 in the feature finishing seventh, all while having power steering issues. On Sunday, Cassidy was back in her pro truck at Colorado National Speedway, where she qualified 13th and finished third in her heat race, but suffered electrical issues in the feature ending her night. Up next for Cassidy, micro sprints at I-76 Speedway this Saturday. William Cox was competing at Atlanta Motor Speedway on Saturday in his number 29 Farbo Motorsports INEX Legend car. Will set on the pole and led every lap on his way to his first victory at Atlanta. Check out this short video clip of that race. Five to five. Side by side, they work out the second corner for the lead. Will Cox on the inside, Lucas York on the outside, Jackson sitting there in third. Will Cox will take the lead as they get the white flag. Ruark will throw it into the first corner, make a little contact with 29, now they make big contact. That allowed Will Cox to break away, but now he is sideways as Jackson will take a look, but Will Cox is gonna hold on for the Legend Young Line feature win over Nathan Jackson, Lucas Ruark. Way to go, Will. The Red Army had another great night of racing in their winged 600 micro sprints at I-76 Speedway for the Lucas Oil Now 600 Series. Justice Sokol, who is driving his restricted 600, competing with the non-restricted cars, started 13th and finished 11th in the feature race. Kobe Sokol notched another top five finish in the feature, finishing fourth against a very competitive field. Up next for Justice and Kobe non-winged 600s at I-76 Speedway on September 7th. Make sure to check out the new So Cool Brothers podcast at justicesocolracing.com or kobesocolracing.com. We want to give a very special congratulations to Race Face Next driver Grant Thompson on winning the Junior Late Model Challenge Camp. What does it mean to win this? Video speaks louder than words. Check this out. Okay, we're ready for the winner. One by one point, their name is right here, and I'm gonna pull this cover off, and you guys can read it. I don't have to announce it. <laughs> Grant Thompson, I'll see you in California. Thank you, Mike Nake. We know you guys are tired up there and you've worked really hard. Thank you to the entire staff at Nate Clower Motorsports for helping us make this happen. I'd like to congratulate Grant Thompson. Phenomenal performance. You're a standout in all categories. Grant will be racing in the October 5th Short Track Championship weekend in the 5150 Junior Late Model Series at Madeira Speedway for Nate Clower Motorsports. Up next for Grant, Mobile International Speedway this Saturday. That's it for this week's Race Face Driver updates. And remember, if you've missed any of our shows, you can get caught up on raceface.tv on demand. Don't miss Race Face Spotlight on Thursdays at 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, this week featuring multi-talented driver Jesse Love. As always, we encourage you to support local racing in your communities. Don't forget to follow us on social media. We will be back next week with more from your favorite race face drivers. So go out there, have a great race week. I'm Brittany Lung, and thanks for watching.